Something that we are frequently asked about is about buying your first gum or buying a new gum. And we did cover this a year or so ago, but we still get asked by several people every week how to go about buying a gum. If you come to us to buy a gum, we will ask you two questions. The first question is, what are you going to shoot? Is it going to be cage? Is it going to be game? Is it going to be pigeons? What are you actually going to shoot? The second question is, roughly, what is your budget? Now, again, a question that we get asked um, is, what sort of money should I spend on a gun? Um, the sort of starter guns, if you like, go up to about seven or eight hundred pounds. Um, you can buy second-hand starter guns for three, four, five hundred pounds. If you are going to go once a month and shoot 50 sporting at the local club and then go down the pub and have a few beers and you want to spend two or three hundred pounds on a gun, that's fine. If you are a competitive person and want to get good at what you do, it's like everything else. What you pay is what you get. So we suggest that if you are into that competitive bracket, if you go into the sort of better quality guns, which is Browning, Maruku, Beretta, something like that, you're talking a thousand pounds upwards. Um, we do get a lot of people that say, well, I'll start off with a 500 pound gun, and within a few months they say, yeah, you're back, I'm going to part exchange it for a thousand pound gun. So, so like everything else, you get what you pay for. But even if you are going to buy a reasonably inexpensive gun, it still pays to find something that fits you reasonably well. And if you look at those, you've got three guns there. You've got a second-hand Nico, you've got a second-hand Lamber, and you've got a second-hand Browning Medalist. Now, look at the difference in the comb height. That Browning has got a much higher comb than these. The Nico's got a lot of drop on it. The Lamber has got slightly less drop than the uh, Nico. And the Browning Medalist has got a bit more height in the comb. Well, another thing that we always get asked about is stop length. Stop length is fairly easy. When you mount the gun, your head should be three fingers from the front of the comb. So it should be here. And this is one of the problems that we have with first-time shooters and novices. When they come in, first thing we do, we give them a gun, and then the first thing we do is put the gun on their shoulder, then we the head back there. The only way you can stop length out correctly is to get somebody standing there, get mounted the gun correctly, mounted, holding the gun correctly, and then you can measure the stop length and make sure it's right. So don't be tempted to go and spend three or four hundred pounds on a gun that is totally wrong for you. You can, you can buy a gun because you see an advert in the paper which says it's a fantastic gun, or you can buy a gun that fits you. It's obvious what the answer is. Another thing we get asked about is barrel length. Now you've got three guns there, 26, 28 and 30. The barrel length really doesn't make any difference to the way the gun shoots. It doesn't make it shoot any further, any tighter. The, the tightness of the pattern is relative to the choke, not the length of the barrel. Generally, it's what feels comfortable to you. We relate size of gun to size of person. You wouldn't give somebody that's four foot nine a 34 inch gun, and you wouldn't give somebody that's six foot five a 26 inch gun. So generally you relate size of gun to size of person. But if I look at somebody and I say, well, I think a 30 inch barrel would be fine for you, and you pick up a 28 inch and say, I prefer that, I can't tell you you're wrong. It's what you feel comfortable with. So, barrel length, although you need to take it into consideration a certain amount, at the end of the day, it's what you feel comfortable with and the person that's selling you the gun feels is right for you. So it's a combination of the two. 
So the advice of Rutgerberg then is go somewhere where they know what they're talking about and they have a reasonable selection. The worst thing you can do is go into a shop and they say, this is the perfect gun for you, sir, and they've only got a choice of four. <laughs> of course it's going to be perfect for you. High street shops will be happy to sell you a gun. Shops that have got shooting grounds like us, we have to be a little more careful because if we sell you a gun which isn't right for you and then you book a lesson with one of my instructors and he says, why did you buy that? It's totally wrong for you. You say, he sold it to me. So we do put a little bit more effort into my, trying to make sure that the gun is right for you. When you've found your gun, we then let you take it out and shoot with it before you buy it to make sure you're happy and we're happy.